numbers now being reported at one within 88 children having a diagnosis, it's pretty clear that autism is a major health crisis. Yet still, in many ways, it is a medical mystery. It's no wonder it's an important topic, because it should be. Children with autism become adults with autism. These are lifetime challenges for the child, the family, and our community at large. Parents of children with autism are constantly seeking alternative ways to support their child. And billions of research dollars are spent in order to find the best method, the best approach, and the best way to help people with autism to rise to their fullest potential. Dance movement therapy is one approach that is gaining attention for its unique capacity to work directly with the core deficits of autism. As a form of creative arts therapy, dance movement therapy is utilized within a therapeutic relationship with a credentialed therapist and uses the expressive elements of dance and movement as a method of assessment and intervention. The goal of dance movement therapy is not like that of a dance class where perhaps our focus might be on teaching stylized steps or routines. Nor is it that of an exercise class where maybe the focus is on physical release or the development of motor skill. Most certainly these goals can happen, but so much more occurs. Instead, dance movement therapy is a carefully attuned therapeutic process that can look differently depending upon its participants. A therapist can work with an individual, working with individual needs, or within a small group where the focus is on social engagement or shared focus. A therapist can also work alongside parents and families in order to help them to build the quality of the, of the parent-child relationship. Dance movement therapy can support people with autism in many ways. This approach is not only unique, but unlike other treatment approaches in autism, our goal is to channel communication into dances of relationship. Let me first describe some important elements of autism. There's a wide spectrum of abilities in those with autism. That's why it's called a spectrum disorder. There's a cognitive spectrum that spans from those that might be more intellectually disabled to those that may be characterized as talking too much. There's a movement spectrum that spans from those that may have more sensory, awkward, sensory integrative challenges to those that have, are more sedentary, extremely limited body awareness, and have low muscle tone. And there's a social and a communication spectrum that spans from those that might respond inappropriately in conversations, have difficulty developing friendships and reading nonverbal cues, to those that are severely shut down from social interaction and are isolated with the world around them. Therefore, because there's such a wide spectrum of abilities in those with autism, there really isn't one way that works for all as the point of entry. Instead, the point of entry into building a relationship with those with autism has to start from where the person is. We need to learn what their way of processing is. We need to ask ourselves, how can I speak their language first in order to establish a place of mutuality? The only universal language is a language that is communicated through movement and through the body. It's a universal language because 
We all speak the language of the nonverbal, whether we have an autism spectrum disorder or not. So let me say that again. The only universal language is a language that is communicated through our bodies and through movement. So that has to be the place where we begin. As a dance movement therapist, I help make sense out of the meaning that occurs within these kinds of nonverbal exchanges. So let me give you an example of how I've used dance movement therapy to connect and build meaning out of this connection. I worked with a girl for several years on the autism spectrum who dealt with many of the challenges typical to this disorder. She had very limited verbal communication. She was more interested in objects and things rather than engaging socially with people. And her sensory system was often overstimulated and this overwhelmed her and she could become agitated and anxious and even aggressive. So I vividly remember a day when we were moving together in a dance movement therapy group. And we were moving, we were twisting from side to side in a rhythm together. And just this experience of moving in rhythm together from side to side meant that we were connected and we were joined. And this in itself was joyful and enlivening. At one point, she, we actually started to twist towards each other and then away, spontaneously towards each other and then away. And I saw this as a metaphor for our relationship, the movement towards and the movement away, the movement towards and the movement away. I am often reminded that when these children move away from me, even their action of choosing to reject my social invitations is still a form of rela relating. Rejection is still in itself a form of social communication. So when our twisting dance happened that day, the movement towards and the movement away, I invited it and used the dance process to turn it into a dance of relationship. I reached my hands out and nonverbally offered to connect my hands with her hands. She took me up on this offer and joined her hands with mine. What happened was our movement towards and a movement away became less about the movement away and more about the movement towards. So spontaneously this greeting that happened initially through the body then grew into a high five and then grew into a wave and then spontaneously out of her own expressive self she said verbally hi <laughs> yeah that was a moment for us i felt it and so did she in that moment we were connected all of this began initially out of my reading her cues, speaking her language first, and using that process to enhance and build a dance of communication. Over the course of our time working together, we had more and more of these moments, these powerful moments of connection. All of it grew out of the spirit of play and movement expression that enlivened the social interaction and relationship formation. It is important to note that my intention is to first understand the person with autism and then to join with them and then to help them modify their communication patterns so that repetitive restrictive behaviors can become channeled the nervous system can settle, and then social engagement can begin. This is dance movement therapy's starting point. These powerful moments, they don't happen all the time. The process is important. The experience of following each other's rhythm, pacing, 
And the trusting therapeutic alliance is paramount to any treatment process. But it's also important in the parent-child experience. There is a true reality here. The lack of social reciprocity that occurs with people with autism, in addition to their behavioral disturbances and language deficits, makes this disorder stressful and difficult for parents in a manner that is different from those with other developmental disorders. Parents rely just as much on their child's communication signals as the child relies on the parent's signals. So the loss of the intentional interactive exchange can feel devastating for a parent. Unfortunately, there is no treatment right now that addresses the biology of autism. But dance movement therapy can certainly address this deep human effect of autism. By helping parents to learn how to attune, to join, to understand their child's nonverbal communication signals, dance movement therapists can help parents and families in building warm and satisfying relationships with their children. Feeling understood for all of us is a biological imperative. For people with autism, this is no exception, nor is it for their parents and families. Therefore, the major strength that dance movement therapy has in working with people with autism is its capacity to produce treatment outcomes in the areas of social relationships, especially in the formation of relationships. The journey to understanding autism requires a resonance into their language. We begin to do this by making human to human contact. The first and only way to do this is through our bodies.